Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to try and answer a question we've gotten an awful lot over the last couple of weeks from folks about the brand new attitude indicator that was just released as part of the DJI Fly application. And more specifically, why the pilot direction indicator might be slightly off from where you think it should be pointing. Now, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this over the last couple of weeks. I've done a ton of testing, and I guess it's the nerd in me, but whenever I have a problem like this, I can't just let it go. I'm not a big fan of getting on the channel and complaining about the stuff that doesn't work. I like to find a problem and then think an awful lot about it and try and do some investigation to figure out what's causing the problem, but more importantly, how can I solve that problem? So today I'm going to give you five different suggestions, and I promise you one of these is going to fix that problem for you, and then you can try these and let me know how that worked out for you. So essentially what I'd like to do is explain just in really basic terms what that attitude indicator shows you because I did a clip on it a couple of weeks ago where I went into really good detail explaining all the indications and, and how I think that's a really valuable display to help you fly a little bit safer. And that applies to any drone using the DJI Fly application, the Mini 2, the Mavic Air 2, even the new FPV drone. And, and that pilot direction indicator bothered me a little bit because there are three dots on there that you'll pay attention to. And I'll explain those in detail in a second, but it's essentially your home point, the drone and the pilot. And the home point and the drone are fine, but the pilot, depending on what you're doing out there in the field, could be a little bit off. And people were a little upset about that because you kind of want to be pointing at the drone to make sure all the signal from your controller is being thrown downfield right at your drone. And if you're 25 degrees or 30 degrees off, you're wasting a lot of signal to the left there. So I'll explain exactly what's going on, but let's talk about the attitude indicator first in case you missed that previous clip. So on that attitude indicator, there are three really important pieces of information. And I'll start with the home point. So that dot with the H on it is the home point. And what that's telling you is the exact takeoff location of your drone. Now it doesn't give you any direction or heading, it's purely a location, and that's gotten from the GPS coordinates inside the drone when it first takes off. So if you take off from the ground on a landing mat or your hand and let it hover for a couple of seconds, it'll actually snapshot the GPS coordination right there at that point in 3D space. And then it knows where to come back to to land if it, you hit the return to home button or there's some kind of battery indicator issue where it's got an emergency return to home, it's going to fly back and pretty much land exactly where it took off. Now to enhance that a little bit, some of the DJI drones also have downward facing cameras. So when you take off and it snaps that picture of the GPS coordinations in its mind, it's also snapping a picture of the area below it. So when it comes back, GPS is pretty good, but it's not perfect. It's within a couple of feet. So it'll come back and try to find that landing zone. But if you've got a more sophisticated drone like the Mavic 2 and some of the other drones, it'll actually find it with a GPS coordination and then look down and try to match up that picture and land exactly where it took off, pretty much within a quarter's distance of where it took off. And I've done a bunch of testing on what's called precision landing, which is exactly what that is, and show you exactly how it'll get close to it, but as it come down, it's gonna actually make adjustments to land exactly where it took off. So anyway, the H is really the home point, and that's been rock solid. There's been no issues with it in the new attitude indicator. The second thing you wanna be aware of is that big triangle in the middle, and that's your drone. And the little, little thing out the front, that little uh, triangle out the front, is showing you the direction of the drone. Now with the drone, there are two different things it's recording. It's recording its location, it's also recording its direction or heading. And those are really important. So with the location, again, it's using a GPS coordination inside the drone to figure out, to fix its position essentially, in 3D space when it's flying. So that's the location. Now its direction or its heading comes from a few things inside the drone. The first one is the compass. So the drone's got an internal compass, and if you've traveled far from the place you flew yesterday, you'll probably get a compass calibration. Or if you get the drone near metal or you're trying to take off from a park bench that's got metal in it, the compass doesn't like that. Because the compass really likes to feel like it knows exactly where north is because it's got to navigate, and it really wants to know that. So it, my recommendation is always, if you get a compass calibration, don't ignore it. That's going to cause nothing but trouble. But more importantly, if you fly 10, 15 times, just do a compass calibration because that puts you back sort of on level ground from the compass perspective. Or if you've flown here and driven more than an hour away, there's a chance that that compass might be a little bit off, so do the compass calibration. All right, so that's the first thing it's using. The second thing it's using is there's a group of sensors inside the drone. All of them have it. So they have accelerometers, they've got maybe VIO, maybe they've got time of flight sensors. All those sensors give the drone a sense of movement. So it knows the direction it's moving, it knows how fast it's moving. All those sensors together are fed into the main brains of the drone, and that's where it can tell its direction, so it's heading, so it knows where it's going. Now again, the good news is on the attitude indicator, both of those are rock solid. They're right on the money. The one that gets a little bit queasy is there's a third dot which shows the pilot. So it shows where you're standing, 
and it shows, there's a little arrow out the front, shows the direction you're facing. And that's the one that's been a little bit queasy for most pilots out there, and they're wondering why that is. Well, think about that. That not only gives you your position, right? It does that through GPS. It also gives you a heading or direction. And the direction and heading is coming right from the compass in your phone. Now, again, that seems like a simple thing, but I'm here to tell you that if you've done any kind of field exercises where you've navigated in a bush, where you're trying to follow a map for coordinates on your phone and stuff, uh, phones in general, and for some reason iPhones, are wildly inaccurate. Now, it depends on the model you're using and how old it is and what you've done with it recently, but don't trust the compass in your phone. It's not something you want to navigate across rough country with because it's not that accurate. Use a real compass when you're doing that. But anyway, the bottom line is the compass in your phone or your tablet, whatever you're using, is what the application is reading to give you that positional direction. So if the compass is off, the software is a slave to whatever it's reading from the compass, and it's going to point you in the direction the compass is telling it to point. And if the compass is not accurate, you're going to have a whole lot of trouble. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind, and this is stuff that I forget about, and I know other pilots forget about it, but it dramatically affects that particular uh, indicator. The first is, what are you doing with your phone? So I'm, I'm a really bad phone guy because here what I've got is a little a little stand back here that I can stand this up and watch movies or YouTube or edit or whatever, that's magnetically attached. So how good is a magnet around a compass? It's going to screw it up. So the first thing you want to do is, if you have a case that is a lot of metal, or if you're goofy like me and you've got this magnetic stand on it, take the case off and don't use the case when you're using your phone. The second thing is, if you've got one of those new pop sockets on the back, one of those things that pop out like my kids love, you can put your fingers behind it to hold onto the phone, those might have metal in it. Could be a bad thing. If you've got a case that's got metal on the back, because maybe you're using a magnetic mount in your dashboard, that metal can affect the compass. If you're wearing a big honking watch, that can affect the compass. If you're near metal, if you're over, believe it or not, if you're over concrete and it's got rebar in it for reinforcement, that can screw around with the compass in the drone. It'll give you errors and you can have problems with your phone. So it's important that you keep this, I don't want to call it sterile, but in as, as a, a non-compass interfering environment as you can, and, and that'll save you a lot of trouble. Even still, the compass can be way off. Now, in the earlier versions, I'm going to pick on the iPhone now, but the Android has complementary things you can do to fix it. In the original iPhones, you could do compass calibration, so it was something you could actually go through. On the newer iPhones, they actually compass calibrate on their own, and there's a couple of ways to force them to do that. And I'm going to give you five ways that you can reset the compass on an iPhone today, and all five of these are really good. One of them will work for you. Maybe multiple will work for you. Some are simple, some take a little bit more work, but I'm going to go through those next. I promise you, once you calibrate the compass, it's going to be really good. You're going to find that that positional indicator for the pilot is right about where you should be pointing. You can trust it and you'll be looking right at your drone. Now, again, it works for, in the Apple side, it's going to work for tablets or iPhones, whatever you're using Apple-wise. And there are complementary things you can do in the Android space as well to do these same things. So stay tuned. And what I'm going to show you next are the first three. And then I'll come back and explain the last two because the first three have to do with settings inside the uh, actual iPhone. The last two are physical things you can do to reset that compass. And that'll solve your problem for you. The first thing to check is to see if you have automatic compass calibration turned on for your phone. To do this, find and tap the settings icon on your home screen. Next, scroll until you find the privacy setting and tap that. Then you can scroll until you see the location services setting and make sure this is turned on and then tap it. On the next screen, scroll and tap the system services setting. Finally, verify that you have the compass calibration turned on. The next thing you can try is resetting location services. To do this, tap the settings icon on your home screen, scroll and tap the privacy setting on the next screen, find the location services setting, and cycle it from on to off and back on a few times to force the calibration. One other thing that can cause some strange compass behavior is the true north setting. To turn this off, tap the settings icon on your home screen, find and tap the compass setting, and then turn off Use True North by hitting the button. Okay, those are pretty straightforward. Now these last two are physical things. You can actually force the compass to recalibrate. And the first one's gonna seem really weird because it's not something I recommend you do. And for me, being a little bit older guy and a goofy guy, it's something that happens automatically for me a lot. And it has to do with a shock to the phone. When the phone gets a shock, the internal gyros and sensors realize that it's got a shock 
and it immediately checks the compass and a few other things that are sort of guiding the way the phone works. So if you have a shock with the phone, there's a good chance it's gonna reset your compass. Now I'm not saying you take it and drop it from eight feet on the concrete, but if you just tap it on your hand like that, that's all it takes. You may think, oh man, I don't wanna shake the electronics inside, but a tap like that's not gonna cause any problems, but a tap like that, a quick start and then an immediate stop is gonna force the gyros and all the other things inside there, the accelerometers, all the things it's watching, to say, what the heck just happened? We better reset the compass. And it's gonna try and reset its bearings for the compass. So that's the first thing you wanna try is a gentle tap. Now, for me, again, being older and being goofy, I drop this phone twice a week. It's just something I do on the concrete, on the grass, on the driveway. So it's automatically resetting the compass when that happens, but I'm not saying do that. I'm saying just hit it on your hand and see if that resets it for you. All right, the second one is a way that you can kind of force it to recalibrate. And the way you do that is to move it in a figure eight motion like this. Right, move it in a figure eight motion. Now, you could move it in one plane like this, which will probably reset it, but again, the compass is gonna wanna see 360 this way and 360 this way. So what I like to do is actually move it sort of in an X direction like this, where I'm going directly at you and then back, and I'm still going up at the same time. So it's sort of a diagonal, if you will, to do that figure eight. Do that six or eight times. It's, you're gonna look a little funny. People are asking you to just say, leave me alone, I'm calibrating my compass over here. And that's it. You just do this a couple of times. And that's the last thing I'll tell you. Now, the truth is, if you started with number one and worked your way up to the gentle tap on it and then moved to the figure eight, that compass is gonna be rock solid and that's gonna fix your problem for you. So it really is just that simple. And again, I can't help but try to solve these kind of problems because the minute, it's like a puzzle. The minute you tell me, hey, this isn't working, my mind's already turning. The nerd in me, the engineer in me is already thinking, man, what could be doing that? Is it the software? Can't really be the software because again, the software is a slave to the sensors. All DJI flies doing is reading the sensors and reporting what it sees in a graphical format. So I start thinking, well, what sensors is it looking at? Okay, it's looking at a compass. Wait a minute, there's a compass on the phone. Could that be off? Now you saw the thumbnail. I've got two iPhones on the desk with a real compass and none of them are pointing the same direction. So which one of those do I trust? For me as an ex, uh, an older Boy Scout, I trust the compass because that's the one that's pointing to true north. The other two might be pointing who knows where, right? And if you're flying drones using those two iPhones that I had in that thumbnail, you're gonna be pointing the wrong direction. Now, it's not gonna dramatically affect your flight characteristics, but it is kind of important the further you get out that you have as much signal as possible facing the drone. So if you're facing this way, and you're at a couple thousand feet, that signal's getting weak because a lot of it's being wasted heading this direction. So anyway, do the compass calibration on your phone regularly. Don't put a gigantic case on it, or if you do, take the case off before you fly and do the compass calibration again. Or like me, I use an iPad mini, and I only use that for flying. So there's no case on that. It goes right in my, uh, my portable case when I'm packing up for the day and goes right back in the drone when I'm flying. I know that's expensive to have a dedicated device, but it solves a lot of problems for you. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions about anything I've covered today, drop those in the comments below. I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. I have so much more content that we're working on. Really exciting stuff on drones and other high-tech gear. And I think we're changing the channel a little bit this year to cover more high-tech gear. And, and the adage we're going to use on the channel is, I argue with the guys all the time that we're a drone channel, I get that, we're talking about drone, but there's so much high-tech gear out there that I want to talk about and sort of review on the channel. And you guys seem to be liking it. So my new thought is pretty much anything I'm looking at in my world, if it runs on electrons, which means if I put a battery in it, I have a solar panel on it, I have to plug it in. If it runs on electrons, I'm gonna talk about it on the channel and I hope you find that exciting. So anyway, that's it for today. Thanks an awful lot for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I say this every time, we get a ton more content coming. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. And until next time, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.